Hey guys, welcome back. And in this video, I will demonstrate how to boost the performance in your Android device without the need for any additional software. By adjusting some simple settings found in the developer options, you can definitely speed up your device. Firstly, navigate your device settings and locate the developer options section. If you can't find it, don't worry. Just head to the about devices section, scroll down to the build number and tap it five to seven times to activate the developer options. Once activated, you can access the developer options from the main settings menu. Here, we will focus on adjusting the Windows animation scale to transition animation scale and the animation duration scale. Don't worry, it's a simple process. In this video, I will explain how to adjust the speed of your Android device's animation when moving between screens. By default, this speed is set to 1x on every Android device. However, you can tweak it to make it faster or slower. For example, if I open up the animation scale and set it up to five times, the animation will be slower. When I open it again, I can see how slow it is. Likewise, the transition animation scale is also set up to one by default. However, if I change it to 0.5, it'll be much faster and smoother. Although there may still be some lag when transitioning between screens. So naturally, as a device animation slowed down, switching between apps and screen takes longer. However, you can turn off animations altogether by toggling the animation switch. This will eliminate any transitional effects when switching between apps and make the process much faster. The lack of animation means that there's no delay between switching apps, so the time spent waiting for a transition is reduced. Now, I personally prefer setting the animation speed to 0.5 as it maintains a visually appealing animation without slowing down the device. What I also find visually appealing is when my subscriber cam goes up and you tap that like button, which motivates me to keep making these videos. All right, now the next step is to optimize an Android device, is to access the app settings and look for the do not keep activities, limit background processes, Enabling the do not keep activity settings will ensure that no apps continue running in the background once they are closed, which will speed up the device considerably. Android does not have an exit button, so apps will continue to run in the background if this setting is not enabled by the user. To exit an app, we usually simply tap on the home button. However, even after exiting the app, it continues to run in the background, which can impact the device's performance. This is relevant to all types of apps, including games. So to remove an app running in the background, you must enter the app drawer and manually close it. An alternative solution is to enable do not keep activities, which restricts apps from running in the background. Although this feature is useful for plug and play games, it may not be suitable for apps like Facebook or WhatsApp that require background activity. Another useful feature is to limit background process, which restricts the number of apps or programs running in the background. As Android is a multitasking operating system, it allows to switch between apps seamlessly. By default, Android permits an unlimited number of apps that run in the background unless the device's RAM is full. However, low RAM devices may face performance issues when running multiple apps in the background simultaneously. Therefore, it's recommended to limit the number of apps running in the background to optimize performance because manually closing apps can be a hassle and failing to do so may cause your phone to crash. Additionally, it can be difficult to predict which apps may crash. To avoid these issues, you can limit the number of apps running in the background. By default, the limit is unlimited, but you can adjust it by selecting a no background process, which allows you to use only one app at a time. On the other hand, setting the limit to one means that you can use two apps simultaneously, one in the foreground and one in the background. This is also true if you set the limit to processes. However, I recommend setting it to four or five processes, allowing up to that many apps to run simultaneously in the processor. This is especially helpful for people with dual core phones, low memory, or those who have many apps cluttering up their RAM. Avoid setting it to one or no background process, as this will limit your phone's multitasking capabilities, which defeats the purpose of a modern smartphone. And of course, forget about setting it to one, which is very impractical. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, so you're always up to date with future videos, offering more tips and tricks that help you become more efficient with your devices. And if you want something else to be featured on this channel, please let us know in the comments. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.